Hello and welcome back indie fans, my name is Nick and this is another episode of Indie Impressions. Today, we are going to be looking at Introversion Software's Multiwinia, the sequel to their, I don't know if I would say hit, but probably one of their best selling games, Darwinia, uh, which came out quite a few years back and it was a very interesting RTS real time strategy game. Uh, basically focuses around you organizing and plotting war with these little virtual characters who you'll see a large red representation behind the uh, main menu there. Uh, they used to be green, but now they're red, uh, at least, well, the enemy ones are. So I would call Multiwinia the Unreal Tournament to Darwinia's Unreal. Uh, the difference being Darwinia was essentially focused around being a single-player game with single-player game types, I should, well, not so much game types, but more of a campaign, whereas the single-player in this is more of a guided tour of the multiplayer options. Which I have no problem with, and I think as companion pieces, Darwinia and Multiwinia actually function really well together. So uh, you may have seen uh, a few days ago I posted a video with uh, Link from Heads or Fails with uh, us playing a multiplayer match, and I will put that right here in the annotation so you can click on that and jump over if you want to check out the multiplayer. Uh, something I haven't really done a lot in Indie impression Impressions is focused on multiplayer games, but this is one that I think is definitely worth a look. And especially if you like strategy games and really quirky games, I think this will uh, fit together pretty nicely. So you'll see we've got a few game types to look through here in single player mode. Uh, Domination, King of the Hill, Capture the Statue Assault, Rocket Riot, and Blitzkrieg. Now, uh, as far as it's gone, I have only played Domination mode, and I think that's the easiest one to kind of grasp. Or no, I've actually played King of the Hill. Domination mode is probably pretty similar though. So you want to overwhelm the entire map, destroy all enemy teams to win. So that's sort of the natural extension to King of the Hill, where you not only do you want to destroy all the enemies on the map to win, you also want to capture all the points. Well, that's really the main point, but you get what I mean. So we'll do a quick domination game, we'll see how that goes, and we've got a, a bunch of different maps to pick from here. Most of them look very interesting, and I have to say I love the graphical aesthetic to Darwinia and Multiwinia. It's a really beautiful kind of like de -rezzed, a uh, downscaled polygon map terrain kind of thing. Uh, I don't know what I should play for on a AI type. Probably normal is fine. I think I should be able to handle normal, hopefully. And uh, the map's got a little description here. Effigies of their creator maintain the solemn vigil over this war-torn plane. Wow. Alright, let's jump into it. And I will go over the basics from the beginning so you guys can get a feel for it. Now, I have to be clear here, I haven't still... To this day, play Darwinia, and I'm embarrassed to say this because I love the idea behind Darwinia, and uh, in that game, instead of fighting other, well, in this case, multi-Winians, Darwinians, you're fighting uh, computer viruses, which I think makes a lot more sense. Well, maybe it's not, it's not that it makes more sense, but at least for a story, it frames it better. In this case, we're just fighting more of our little guys here. So, capture all spawn points to win the game, yeah, we get it. So, let's start the game. Got some, like, Moai Easter Island heads on this interesting-looking playing field here. So the uh, the way the controls work were a little bit complicated to me at first. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Uh, the big thing is you click and hold left-click to make one of these, uh, like, radius-based selectors appear. And what that's going to do is allow you to, well, hopefully, if you're good with it, strategically select little groups that you want to send out to different places. I'm going to send some over here to this other spawner. These are the spawners, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Get a nice zoom in for you so you can see what's going on. Alright, and then these guys, once they take control of it, it lights up, and then it's going to generate more of my multi-winians. I've also sent a group over to this spawner, and now we've got intrusion by the green team. They're coming in. Uh, we also want to focus over here. There's more spawn points to grab, and of course, the faster you can grab the spawn points, the faster you are going to amass a larger army. Uh, right here, I can tell this is going to be a problem for me. Look at my size of my guys versus theirs. They're going to win, no doubt. Uh, if I could retreat, that would be cool. I'm betting I probably can't, though. Uh, what do I have now? Okay, I've got a decent-sized group again over here. Maybe they can meet up together, group everybody together at this one point. Oh, Napalm Strike happened. And that's another thing we worry about is crate drops and how frequently we're going to find those. Um, maybe I want to start flanking and try and get around, if possible. 
And I want to keep moving forward on this end towards this next spawn point because they haven't started going that way. So I'm going to be flanking them by accident in a way. All right, get all of these guys. Go after that. Don't get lit, lit on fire. It's just a general rule I have for life. Do not get lit on fire. Nuke. Okay, nuke is going to be bad. Let's get our guys away. Retreat. All right, where's a crate I can actually get? Because so far... They're all falling on the enemy side, which is really unfortunate. Right, let's move some more guys around. I love the look of the trees. They're, like, made out of lasers, which is just something I... I aspire to have trees made of lasers in my life more often. So, I'm glad this game can deliver that very, very specialized function in my life. Oh, that nuke strike is still happening, isn't it? Don't go in there, guys! Get away. Get away. All of you. I'm not sure exactly where they're focused, but I don't want to know. So if you didn't know, uh, Introversion Software also made this game called DEFCON, which is where they get this dotted line reference and these, like, vectored-looking LCD kind of submarine ships. Um, DEFCON's a, an interesting strategy game. It's uh, largely one of those games that you'll play it for a few minutes at a time uh, until you get really good at it, and then maybe you can obsess about it a little more. But I found it to be a little bit more challenging than I was up for. Uh, the point is basically you have a like a world map, and everyone's got nuclear capabilities, and they're all going to fire off their weapons, and you basically have to hit the most points and survive. Pretty much every single time, it's like guaranteed world annihilation, which is a little depressing. I'm, I'm not going to mince words. It's definitely not the most... Uh, lighthearted game. It's certainly not as lighthearted as Darwinia can be, even though you're sending your little virtual guys to their virtual deaths constantly. So I've gotten a couple power-ups here. I've gotten a dark forest, which I'm going to place semi-strategically right here. Uh, I'm not the best strategist, so if I make a stupid move, please forgive me. Uh, and the point of that is it's going to make them have a harder time moving around so they can't get their troops from this spawn point to me as easily should be able to take control over this one if I get a little lucky. And then I will be able to be generating even more soldiers. I'm actually amassing a pile over there right now. Uh, reason being, I'm going to need to try and get them from the side so they don't see it coming quite as much. Tied for first. Alright, stuff's starting to look up. They have a large troop movement moving in over here. I haven't even touched on the fact that there are... Um, you can specify, like, captains, commanders or something. Oh, wow, I didn't know they were over on this end. And the point of the captains is to automatedly send all your guys in a certain direction so you don't have to be micromanaging quite as much. And it's actually a really good idea. I think they just put a dark forest on my spawn point. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, if you're really good with your captain placement, uh, I think they might even not be called captain, but it's something like that. Crap, they're taking my initial spawn point. That's not good. Uh, then you'll be, uh, if you're really good with the placement of these troops, you'll be able to effectively take your hands mostly off, and the game will start to take on a more organic flow, where you really are just sort of directing whatever the front of the battle is, instead of constantly trying to regroup and move your troops from their, you know, origin points every time. And it takes a lot of the pressure off the player to have to be thinking on that level quite as much. Um, I, of course, am not that good at that yet, so still working on that ability. Right now, I'm just trying to get the basic strategies of, you know, map understanding and uh, being able to flank your opponents, getting good at, you know, even mastering the controls and stuff. I've gotten 500 kills. Excellent for me. Okay, we've got a big war brewing over on this front. I I think I have the numbers to take them out, not sure. I could use a little boost here, but all I'm getting is freaking harvesters, which I don't know how to use. Um, collect souls of multi winians and drops them at a spawn point. Now, if I could put that, like, right here, that would be really nice, but I don't know why I can't. It has to be around a spawn point, apparently. Alright, whatever, I'll put it there. No, stay, stay here. Collect, collect the souls or whatever you do. Alright, you guys regroup. They've taken back that spawn point. I need to grab this crate. Definitely reminds me of Worms, you know, looking forward to crate drops and hoping you get some ninja ropes and all kinds of useful stuff. Oh, that, that was bad for me. That was a really nasty hit. 
That really screwed me right there a little bit. Um, I need to have less harvesters in my toolbar here because I could use like a meteor strike or something that will actually do some damage. What are those? Something bad happened here. These are like stopping these guys from moving, I guess. Oh, what? Where did they just come? Oh, did their their cargo ship must have just dropped them over in this corner. Which is bad for me because it's going to split up my troops. I need to get these guys. And I apologize, yeah, I apologize for flickering and jumping back and forth so quickly with the viewpoint, but I'm trying to manage the best that I can and still hopefully win. It's a, a difficult thing, these strategy games. So we've got 3 minutes and 13 seconds remaining. They have 5 spawn points captured, I have 2. So things are not looking up for me right now. I need to be actively sending my guys from their initial spawn points out to help me. And I'm going to try and amass some more troops over on the side, but the thing is you don't want to amass them all too much in one spot or you're going to end up getting blown up. And nobody wants that. Oh man, another nuke strike or whatever, another uh, napalm maybe. Just constantly dropping these huge bombs on another one. Jeez. I've gotten some really, really bad drops. Which, uh, this is one sort of not the most compelling thing about this type of game is when it's based so much off of strategy, if you introduce a random element like crate drops that can completely change the tide of a battle, I mean, you're kind of putting the whole game up to luck at that point, and I'm not super into that idea. I mean, it's either skill-based or it's luck-based. Don't mix the two of them, because then you're just going to get frustrated, because you're going to be trying to use your skills to the best of your ability, and then luck is going to kick in, and you're just going to die. Who are these guys? You got black multi -winions? Where do they... They must have some kind of ability on them or something. Maybe they have rage. can't even, like, get over to this corner to try and take any more spawn points. Maybe I can just go and just see what happens. Tied for first. Alright, we got three and three again. Let's move forward. Let's kick ass, take some names. Drop another harvester? Can I... Man, I still don't get how these things work. I guess they have to be near your initial spawn point? No. Oh, that one has to be by that spawn point. So I guess these harvesters are placed near each one automatically, and then you can move them from there. So I should probably be using that, because I should be able to bolster my troop numbers that way. One minute remaining. If I can just take back one, I should be able to at least tie. Hopefully they'll grab that crate in time. Send them over there. Grab some more of these. And uh, as the maps get more and more expansive, the strategy levels get more and more deep, of course. Uh, so much so that it can get a little overwhelming in my opinion, but I'm also just not great at these types of things. I just got a nuke. Uh, where can I place a nuke that will be very useful for me? Perhaps this region. I may have wanted to think on that longer, but let's just see what happens. Hope for the best. Pray for the worst, hope for the best, right? Just keep these guys moving, get them out and going. Don't want to stagnate. My uh, drop ships here are doing, I think, a decent job, I'm not sure. He's going to bring back a hundred souls, and then I will have another hundred multi-winians to aid in my attack, but uh, we are over. Sudden death, okay, it goes until the tie is broken. If this nuke hits right, I might be able to break the tie and take that point, because I have quite a few guys right here waiting in the wings. A thousand kills. There's a brutal, brutal digital sport, this multi -winia. Oh, and I got eggs, too. What the eggs do is it spawns a bunch of random monsters uh, wherever I drop this, and the eggs will have a chance to defend me. Sometimes, though, they I guess they ally with the enemy. But this could really screw up their day if it lands right. Alright, so the nuke's done. 
I need to move in right now and not lose any ground. I think I have enough troops to actually do it, too. Okay, move in. Come on. Grab these guys. Grab everybody. Assault. I won! Wow, I don't even know what I just did to take... Where did I take a, my last base? Oh, maybe... Did the monsters do it? No, that's still green. Alright, let's just count up my orange bases here. So I've got one, two, three, four. Oh, well I had all of those before. I guess... Did I retake this one? I don't know. Something changed. Apparently they had one of those bases and I didn't. Anyway... Uh, let's go back out. Uh, one thing that I find a little frustrating about Multiwinia is every time you leave a game, at least in multiplayer this happened, it took you back to the absolute front menu, which is kind of weird. Why do that? Um, and it doesn't actually take account to the fact that you beat this. It should, like, check it off or something. That would be nice, at least. So then we've got King of the Hill... Oh, you know, the, I was thinking the goal was to capture points, but it was still to just kill everybody, so I guess I succeeded in that. And, uh, let's try a new map. What's a good map I haven't tried at all? Man, these look complicated. We've got three teams going at the same time. Wow. Alright, this looks like a crazy map, so let's just go nuts and try one of the craziest looking maps that I see even available. And I think this is a, hopefully another 10 minute one I wasn't looking. So this looks like it's going to have some pretty advanced level play. We've got one, two, three, four teams all vying for all of these control points. It looks like a freaking, uh, what's that game where you ski ball, where you roll the ball up the thing and you try to get it in all the holes. Uh, looks like just a slaughter is going to take place. I don't know where these gates take you. I actually haven't used gates before. So, let's just start it up, see what happens. Uh, if this gets at, ends up getting cut short, then so be it. Just rush right in. Because fools rush in, that's what they say. And see if we can get a couple points here. So you'll see in the top left corner, the amount of points is going to slowly tick up. Uh, based on how many control points I am holding at a given moment, the more I hold, the more it goes up per tick. <clears throat> Blue is already rushing us. Let's see what this gate does if I throw him through it. I've moved to second place. Somebody's already taken a bunch more than me. Um, doesn't do anything, I guess. Alright, that was a waste of time. Uh, let's head over here. Man, this is going to be a slaughter. wonder where the crate's going to land. Uh, should show it on the ground, I think. Moved to third place already. Yeah, there's the crate. Totally in blue-green territory. I'm not going to have a chance on that one. I moved to last place. I'm terrible at this game, I'm sorry. Now, we're all on reasonably equal footing to start out, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to really turn the tides, if not for getting lucky with crate drops. If I could get, like, a turret or something, that would definitely help me move forward. I need to keep pushing these guys forward into enemy territory. If I could actually maybe assign... I'm gonna assign a, uh, captain to send my guys out over to here. That way I can worry a little less about micromanaging. Somebody just placed a dark forest. That's not good at all. I think I have the numbers to take this single point right here, depending on how they want to fight that battle. But I also need to be aware that red could move in at any point, because red right now is focusing on moving into the center, whereas everybody else is focusing on moving to the side. Man, so I need a crate drop to really have a, even a chance at this. And I'm not sure that's going to happen, because the timer is already at 2 minutes 52. Right opened a crate, and I don't know what it was, but I'm sure it's going to be devastating. Alright, my troops over here are significant. They are taking that point. 
No doubt. Alright, I should maybe be able to sneak into the center. I don't know if maybe not sneak is the right word, but, uh, move. Because there's not a lot of sneaking going on here when everybody's shooting lasers at each other. Oh, blue is moving in and green has just placed an airstrike. Oh, I get a crate. Good for me. What will it be? Let's see. <clears throat> and I think the more guys you can put on the crate, the faster it opens. Because you see that uh, circle has to fill up with your color before you take it. Because sometimes it's being contested. Oh, a rocket turret. That is good news for me, actually. If I can place this in a really great spot, I should be able to really effectively help my own situation here. So let's move some of my guys onto that turret. And that's going to bombard the center, and I should be able to actually get in there and do some damage. I should also be able to assume control of it, which is a really cool feature of this game. I can probably friendly fire my own guys, yeah, so that's, that's a thing. Um, I could probably just start launching some rockets out. Oh man, I just like killed my entire troop movement here. Uh, the goal was to not kill everyone on my side, but the goal was to actually just clear it out. Uh, but the rockets seem like they only go so far, so I needed to uh, pay more attention to that. Alright, looks like the center is... mostly everything is dead. I was gonna hopefully try and take out the blue guys as well. Well, what, what's been done has been done, so let's uh, see if we can move back in. Uh, it's not going to work. I'm in freaking last place. That's so lame. Oh, it's a gun turret right next to it. I don't know. Where did that go? I don't see a gun turret other than mine. Spawn main- oh, this is- okay, that's theirs. Did I take control over it? It's orange. No, no, it's red. No, 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 it's orange. Alright, cool. Yeah, so they're proximity based, I guess, the uh, last group that has the controlling influence in that area takes control of turrets as well. So, yeah, even though I've reached this point, I'm not going to be able to turn the tides from my 657 to the winner's 1494. So, I will run in last place for that one. It was an unfortunate game, and, well, it is what it is. Strategy is strategy. I'm not the great greatest at it. I'm sure some of you guys are much better than I. Quite amazing how much is going on in a given game of this. I mean, look how many troops are on the screen at once, and uh, the size of the maps. I mean, this is a particularly small one, but some of them are five, six times this. And it's just a very cool game, and I really like it. Um, I do want to play Darwinia, though, because I think having a more focused single-player game will be a boon. And I'm curious to know if there's a more, like, a focused story as well to go along with the campaign. But all in all, I recommend it. If you ever see this on a Steam sale or anything, I would definitely pick it up. And if you have a friend to play it with, that is where the meat of the game lies. So a really cool multiplayer RTS with some great retro graphics and, you know, quirky pl gameplay. Um, like if you're a fan of worms, strategy games, stuff like that, I think you'll enjoy this one. So that will pretty much wrap us up for today. Another episode of Indie Impressions Down, and a look at Multiwinia. So, as always, remember to head on over to facebook.com slash Indie Impressions, where I post every night's video. You can feel free to pass those on to friends. If you have a friend that you might want to play this kind of a strategy game with, you might want to show them this, and then, you know, that'll initiate the interest, which will get you both to pick it up on Steam, and then you can get some gaming in. Uh, and that is the kind of stuff that I'm here to promote. Get people playing indie games, get people talking to their friends about them. Good stuff. Uh, so beyond that, remember to head on over to at Rockley Smile and at Indie Impression on Twitter. Uh, follow me, my personal one, at Rockley Smile, so you can get my daily status updates, whatever the hell I'm talking about, whatever is new and relevant in my world. And of course, the at Indie Impressions, that's the show's feed, and whenever I upload videos to my YouTube channel, you will see those immediately posted there so you'll be on the absolute cutting edge of whatever it is i am doing on youtube 
So that will wrap us up for today. Thank you again for watching, and remember to come back tomorrow because I do these videos every single day. I'm not going to say every day of the year yet because it hasn't been a full year since I started, but I see that happening. It's possible. Uh, if interest continues to rise at the rate that it's been rising, and I have to thank you guys for liking these videos so much because it's really giving me the impression that you're enjoying my indie impressions. And uh, I will continue doing it for as long as I can. I haven't missed a day yet. We're like 122, something like that, videos in. And we're going strong. So thank you again for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Have a lovely night. Later, guys.